Hi everyone, my name is Cynthia, let's talk books, and today I'm here to talk about a book that has been on my TBR for years, years, years. And um, <laughs> I knew I had to post a dedicated video to this book when I realized that uh, my take on this book is very different and I hope I don't lose any friends over this video. The book is The Black Count by Tom Reese. This is a work of nonfiction featuring uh, Alexander Dumas's father, General Alexander Dumas. If you don't know, the writer of the Three Musketeers and the Black Count, all both really excellent classics, um, had a black father, right? He was mixed race. He, uh, Alexander Dumas, the general, had a white French aristocrat father and a black mother. So he was born in Haiti, Saint-Domingue at the time. And really it's quite an extremely fascinating story. This book what it does well, it does really, really well. I think this book is important for highlighting the life of a black individual and his really important contributions in French history, right? A lot of people, especially in France, talk about France as being um, kind of not a racist country. And uh, as somebody who specializes in modern French history, I just know that that, that just the the evidence is not there. There's too much evidence of the kind of racism that has existed in France for a long time, but also the existence of black people in France for an extremely long time. Really, we can talk about since the beginning. Uh, although my area of this book expertise is modern history. Uh, so things that this book does really well is go through the biography of Alexander Dumas, the general, um, and how his life inspired the works of his son. Yeah. Um, Alexander Dumas was clearly inspired in, uh, by his father's life to write The Count of Monte Cristo. Um, and so one of the things that gets highlighted throughout the story is those connections. So if you read The Count of Monte Cristo, I think you'll find that really interesting. Yeah. Um, uh, General Dumas was also a high, I mean, he rose through the ranks during the French Revolution to become a, one of the most important and um, successful generals in French military history, and that's saying a lot, right? So, all of that is extremely well done. I think if you pick up this book, you're going to pick it up for this because you're interested in Alexander Dumas. If you're interested in the life of uh, his father, the general, and then what Reese does is kind of interweave in the biography of, of Dumas all of the history that's going on because he's born and is alive during a period of a lot of change and turmoil in France. One of the things that um, Reese does really well in terms of the history is talking about the freedom principle and talking about slavery in the colonies. So um, Dumas Sr. is born at a time in which Haiti was a French colony and um, there is slavery and one of the things that is debating that that france is debating is the place of slavery and black individuals in french society well one of the things that um, shapes the place of black people in france during this time is the black codes of course and this relationship of uh, a colony with the metropole but also a legal precedent in france called the freedom principle now this was an old uh, legal precedent that was said that was never meant to apply to slavery Slavery, but nevertheless, it was used uh, pretty much every single person who sues the French government using the freedom principle wins their freedom. So enslaved people in France could sue their slave owners and get their, uh, and get their freedom. Now, you would have to know about this law, first of all, and like there's some complications to this, but I I, the way Reese summarizes uh, the, the freedom principle is expertly done. And it's in large part because he's using, and I checked all the citations and references, he is using the work of Susan Peabody, who wrote a monumental book called There Are No Slaves in France. She debunks that idea that there were no slaves in France. Amazing book. So he does a really good job of using all of the work of C uh, Susan Peabody's uh, book, interweaving it in the biography of Alexander Dumas, his father. So well, when I started reading the book and I read that, I was like, oh, I'm going to love this book. <laughs> And then, and then uh, we progressed to the French Revolution. 
and uh, there are things here that are done uh, well but I had problems with some of the historical interpretations as presented by Ries. So the first one was um, the flight to Bahrain. Louis the 16th and Marie Antoinette at one point during the revolution finally realized they need to escape and they try to flee France and um, you know, Marie Antoinette's brother was, was Holy Roman Emperor. Marie Antoinette's brother was Holy Roman Emperor and he was willing to provide aid for the French monarchs. This is a terrible idea. Uh, and there, for so many reasons, this is an extremely pivotal point in the French Revolution when the King and Queen of France try to flee the country. Um, I did not like the, the way Reese um, discusses it in, past, in part because I feel like he didn't give enough importance, there wasn't enough of a discussion of how important the flight to Bahrain is, especially in terms of um, the terror during the French Revolution. And it's clear when I went into the bibliography and into the things that were cited that he was missing some key works on the terror and on the flight to Bahrain. Especially important on the flight to Bahrain was, is this by one of my graduate school mentors when the king to took flight by Timothy Tackett. I, I wish that he had looked at this book and other works that also discuss uh, the flight to Bahrain and provided a more complete discussion of the flight to Bahrain. Uh, another discussion in which the historical interpretation to me was severely lacking was in the fear of a foreign invasion. Uh, Rees discusses the fear uh, amongst the revolutionaries of a foreign invasion of France and kind of dismisses it as not something that was very logical. And the problem with that interpretation is that historians uh, in more recent works that were available when this book were, was written have shown how important that fear of a foreign invasion was and also how real that fear was and how real it just how real it all was. Um, and so those key works are missing in uh, the sources that Rees used uh, for that history. And it's kind of surprising because this has gotten up, this lemma has gotten a lot of attention. And Rees does cite a lot of really important books in the French Revolution, including a lot of like women's history during the French Revolution. So then to have this hole in the historiography was just too, too evident for an expert on the French Revolution. Um, so those those two though are a matter of interpretation, right? Like, all right, so he didn't get to every single book written in the French Revolution and his, um, uh, the historical analysis is lacking to me because of that. Um, okay, uh, that's one thing. But then there were two glaring uh, problems with some of the history that he discusses, uh, that I had at least. Um, the first is his description of the Committee of Public Safety. He discusses the Committee of Public Safety as if they were in charge and they were not uh, and, and Robespierre as like being in charge. Um, he's not. the Part of the problem after the execution of uh, Louis XVI and Marie Antoinette is that there's no executive running the country. So it is the Committee of Public Safety and the Committee of General Security that take on the role of the executive and of uh, managing the war with basically the rest of Europe that France is under. So at this point during uh, the French Revolution, not only is there uh, a revolution still underway, um, a civil war really with uh, the counter revolution and then an all, all out war with the rest of Europe. It's an extremely complex moment. Um, and I thought that one, the description of, of uh, public safety of the Committee of Public Safety was way too too broad and just it was uh, it was not good enough and the committee of general security is not mentioned at all and for the things that Reese was discussing you have to talk about the committee of general security now uh, when talking about the terror he does do a good job of not just focusing in Paris in fact he gives us very little of the terror in Paris because really when you talk about the terror it's primarily happening in um, in in other places in France right in rural France and so that part was good but then the discussion of the executives and the these committees was severely lacking the other place where I found the discussion severely lacking was in the coup 
how Napoleon comes to power. So Napoleon comes to power because of a coup on the the revolutionary governments, and as part of this coup, Napoleon is one of three individuals who execute this coup. And in fact, Napoleon had nothing to do with the initial planning of this coup. He was invited into the coup, into the conspiracy, uh, because uh, people thought that uh, one, he was well respected at this point, his invasion of Egypt seemed to have gone well. And so they want somebody from the military that can come in and like have the military back this coup. But they think that Napoleon can be used and manipulated. They get all this wrong, but regardless, uh, Reese does not discuss any of this. He he discusses uh, Napoleon's rise to emperor as like it's him and his brother, and like that's it. <laughs> One other of the conspiracy uh, members is mentioned, um, and like there was initially three councils, uh, and so anyways, I I I did not. Um, I thought that that was severely lacking. However, I want to end on a positive note because I think one of the best things to take away from this book is one, the rise of this mixed race black general in the French military, right? Alexandre Dumas kind of rejects his father's aristocracy, in fact, changes his name. Dumas was his mother's name, uh, last name, and he, the revolution creates this opportunity. There's this moment during the French Revolution where things could have gone totally different. It uh, won, finally, the, the revolutionaries eventually end slavery and create equal opportunity for all men in France, regardless of race or ethnicity. And it's extremely important because it's an opportunity for Alexander Dumas to prove himself and to rise within the ranks of the military. And he does exactly that. He achieves amazing things in a time period in which uh, he could have ended up very differently, right? He was particularly great at uh, against large odds with a small group of men achieving kind of impossible victories. A lot of the things that the French revolutionary government was asking of the military were close to impossible. And yet Dumas manages key victories at important moments. And this helps France push back before an invasion and uh, and win, which allows the revolution to then kind of move, move forward. Um, what the revolutionaries do with that is it's a whole other thing. Uh, and Ries does an amazing job also of talking about how Napoleon closes that. This moment of opportunity during the revolution is completely undone when Napoleon comes to power. Uh, Napoleon is not a great hero. I think people kind of idolize him too much for his military victories, but even his military victories are dare I say it, a bit overblown. But you see it here in how petty Napoleon was. Napoleon wants everyone around him to like bend their knee in front of him, right? Uh, for people to owe complete loyalty and devotion, to have complete loyalty and devotion to him and him alone. And Alexander Dumas, the general, was not one of these people that was willing to do that. He was a firm believer in a Republican France, uh, a government that was representative of the people. And so when he meets Napoleon in the military, they just clash. And he basically insults Napoleon over and over again. And so Napoleon ends up having this uh, extreme hatred of Alexander Dumas. And as a result, then Dumas will never, after the invasion of Italy, have a prominent role in the French military. Napoleon goes further than that. It wasn't just, you know, personal petty differences between two men. Napoleon doesn't and the ability of uh, black men to rise in the ranks of the military. Um, the small number of black men who are allowed to serve in the French military under Napoleon served only in like menial roles. They were not allowed to really do soldiering. And in order to rise in the ranks of the military, you have to do soldiering. And so when they're just using these men to like do things like dig trenches and, and this kind of work, 
um, it, it's just the opportunities are closed. And so Napoleon has a lot to do with that, of closing the door of op racial opportunity in France. He has a similar role uh, in terms of women's rights in France, actually. Um, but that's a whole other story. So anyways, for me, this book was a bit of a mixed bag in terms of the history, but I think it does do some key elements really, really well. So I would not say don't read it. I think uh, you should pick this up if you're interested in the history of uh, General Dumas, in the history of um, Black people during the French Revolution and, um, and a little bit of in, into the Napoleon era. And, um, and really take the rest of the history as just broad, very broad strokes of what the rest of the history is during the revolution in Napoleon. Take it with a grain of salt. If you're interested in any of those elements, then go to other books for it, right? Um, if anyone's interested in me talking specifically a little bit more about uh, some of these points that I brought up, I'm happy to talk about it. Um, even though I'm not a French revolutionary historian uh, because I was trained by one of the most prominent uh, French revolution historians, I feel like I am very, I'm very confident in my knowledge of the French revolution is what I'm saying. Um, so I'm happy to, to talk more about any of the history here. Uh, maybe do more videos on it if people are really interested and kind of focus them, probably focus videos on like particular books uh, that revolve around topics. I'm thinking maybe that, that maybe that's a, an idea I can, I can go with. Uh, but either way, uh, even if you disagree with my take on this book, please let me know down below. I'm uh, with, with books like this. I know uh, I have friends who love this book. And uh, so, so, you know, having a different take on it is not a bad thing is the point of reading and of making these videos and of discussing this element with the wider community community. So thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.